Welcome to the Science of Golf Performance. Uh, my name is Bobby. And I'm Chris. I'm Alex. And today we're going to go over the best shoulder exercises for your golf swing. So uh, when we're looking at golfers, we see a lot of people with shoulder pain. We see a lot of people with shoulder limitations. And we see a lot of people that are trying to swing like the top tour players who can get into these crazy positions with their shoulders. So what are some things that we usually want to assess when someone comes in to help their golf game out? I think the shoulder is one of those main four rotary centers that we look at. So to have proper rotation in that area or external rotation is one of the things that we're mainly going to look at. We do the 90-90 test here. We look for them to be able to get their uh, shoulder angle past their spine. Uh, and that's pretty optimal for a golfer. That they want to be. That. I'm not going to do it right now, but because <laughs> we've been sitting for a while, but you know, I can do it. I think it's important before we jump into like how to assess it, right? Is what is shoulder care? And I think the biggest thing I see, like if you watch golf on TV, is whoa, you know, it's like look at that shoulder turn. Well, that's actually your thoracic spine, right? right. That's not actually your, what we talk about shoulder turn. What we're talking about is how well your shoulder externally rotates. So. We turn to the side here, so if I can get back, my forearm can get beyond my spine angle, then that's good. That's where we want to be. Um, Alex, I think you were more here, probably. I was I the there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, if you're tired or have a shoulder issue, you know, a lot of golfers watching this, you know, you sitting there in your chair right now, go ahead and try it. Um, and if you can't get your hand or forearm beyond your spine angle, you're going to struggle getting it down into your, particularly in your trail arm, so right hand. Right arm for right handed player, mm -hmm. left arm for left handed player. You're going to struggle dropping it down into the slot. And usually, if you can't do it, you're going to add a lot of side bend to the right because mm -hmm. it's cramped there. Um, <laughs> but, you know, and that can cause more back issues. Um, so, I think that's the reason why this is so important. And we'll talk through how to assess it and how to progress and kind of do the best exercises for you uh, is that it can, it's absolutely critical for you to complete a good golf swing, mm -hmm. a, a, a yeah, repeatable golf swing. Um, and it's also just critical to prevent injury because I can't tell you how many people have we seen that have a shoulder limitation that present with back pain. And they come in thinking they have a back problem, but it's actually a shoulder problem. Right. Or somebody with, you know, with thumb issues. Yeah. Let's say wrist, yeah. elbow. We see a lot of left or lead side, left hand and wrist, elbows on right handed player. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of injuries coming from a lack of right shoulder rotation because yeah. when they get to the top, there's a lot of added stress because their shoulder can't go where it needs to go. So, yeah. So I think that's the context of why it's incredibly important. Um, but I think then the assessing is exactly what we just talked about. Alex mentioned the 90-90. Yep. Can you get past the spine angle or not? And we, you know, it'll be easier sitting up. We always do it in golf posture. Um, but let's say somebody fails. What, is, what, is, what does that mean? Uh, well, usually there's three different types of issues if you can't get your shoulder pass, right? So obviously if it's painful, you want to do something to get out of that pain because you not sure if it's a structural limitation or if it's the pain stopping you from getting in that area, right? But if you're not painful and you're just kind of stuck, probably like Alex and I are, right? Um, one of the first things you can look at is working on some of the muscles that are around the shoulder. Um, so you've got muscles that will restrict actually that movement backwards. And if they're tight, if they're bound up, um, whether you've you know got a desk job and you're sitting a lot, or if you're driving a bunch, or if you just don't do any soft tissue work, period, those muscles can bunch up, they can tighten up, and they're gonna to wanna to kind of go through either a professional release or even some techniques that you can do at home to kind of unwind those muscles and get them moving again. I think one of the best visuals for me, go ahead, raise your arm. So I'm just like raise it up, like, hey, how you doing? Watching the video, can you see it? <laughs> um, so you know, when he goes when he goes up, his sleeve slides down. And that's every muscle, I think of this as the muscles in your um, in your arm. Yeah, you, know, you need to do more curls, by the way. Um, yeah, your your sleeve or your fascia around it is supposed to have a relationship where it glides. Mm -hmm. So if you put your arm down again, I pulled your sleeve down. Now try to raise your arm. Now all of a sudden, his arm can't go up. Um, so most people that when they that's what's happening to you is you're failing right now. Is your sleeve is stuck. So you can stretch to the cows come home, but if, if all you really need to do is release the sleeve or get my hand off the sleeve, and all of a sudden you have magically more motion. Yeah. And I think that's the value of a lot of the, the fascia restriction. I would say what ninety percent. At least of people that come in, that's what the issue is. Um, and obviously, I think you mentioned joints like it's arthritic mm -hmm. or there's bony growth that shouldn't be there. That doing releases isn't going to necessarily help that. Uh, but even to some extent, you'll get 
five degrees back, 10 degrees back, and that's five degrees of pressure that's not going somewhere else on your body with your golf swing, or that's five extra degrees of club head control that you can have half of. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. And I think it, then the, uh, I guess the third category was, I call it your brain's your problem. And then, is it, you know, you have full motion, but your brain doesn't necessarily know how to activate or, or get you to that range. Right. I think a lot of the, the younger crowd who kind of tested this one is they have more than enough mobility and ability to get there, but they just don't know how. And like you said, their brain doesn't know how to put them in that position. Right. If so, you're a junior golfer, have a junior golfer, you'll probably see them struggle with this and something like stretching or even the soft tissue work we talked about earlier might not be the answer. It's just they're growing and they don't necessarily know where the end of their arm is. A lot of those kids actually, they feel tight. So they'll report that like, yeah. I just feel, I need to stretch, I feel so tight. That feeling of tightness is your body's attempt to just restrict the motion that they can't control. Right. Um, yeah, so, they can do splits. Yeah, <laughs> but they feel like their hamstrings are tight. Yeah. Right? They feel the groin is tight. <laughs> um, so I guess, how do we improve that? The neuromuscular well, think, so brain the, yeah, issue, the, the tissue issue. We just you know that soft that. tissue work. You know, uh, will help uh, the. Uh, I guess the brain problem. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we got all sorts of different drills with that. Um, you can do shoulder plank taps. You can do rotations up on the wall. What's your number one? Well, it's probably the number one up is up against the wall. Okay. Um, so a shoulder lift off or shoulder external rotation, I like to call it. Um, just using the wall for a little bit of assistance. Um, can kind of help your brain remake that connection of how to move the shoulder. Mm-hmm. Um, really, there's tons of exercises that can help recreate that connection and help anybody who has mobility but doesn't know how to use it regain that control. Okay. I like wall angels um, to teach like the upward rotation for the mm-hmm. brain, so like pressing up the wall, lifting off, or keeping that position. Um, to just a lot of a lot of juniors again have the ability to get the overhead position, just don't know how. Uh, so that kind of teaches the brain how to put them in that correct position. Yeah. I think that's a big uh, misnomer in a lot of overhead work um, mm-hmm. is people think you got pinched down and back, mm-hmm. but in reality, the shoulder blade needs to upwardly rotate or come up and around the side of the rib cage as you raise your arm. Yeah. Um, and so I think you know, the contract relax is a great example. Um, I think wall angels are, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I think those, those are great ways to help to teach people to start to get their shoulder in the right position with some external rotation and start to get strong in that. Uh, and speaking of strength, um, yeah, how I mean, how do you like to kind of progress people from a strength perspective? So let's say they came in, Bobby can't raise his arm. Mm-hmm. They do soft tissue work, no, magically he can raise his arm. Mm-hmm. Um, but he has no idea how to control it. <laughs> right. So I think there we want to start at the lower grade and kind of build up to that overhead strength. Um, I like bottoms up carries with the kettlebell, so getting them in that nice position, holding the kettlebell, helps teach you to keep the shoulder in and not internally rotate, um, but having them just hold it there isometrically or walk with it. Um, they also go into a little bit of a press if they're at that level, so same positioning, working on upward rotation with the kettlebell, uh, that kind of gets them slowly working up to that overhead stability in the shoulder. And then cueing, do we, we don't want them feeling it up here, right? We tend to... How do you cue, I guess? My cue cue is if they feel their elbows, their elbow is popping out and they're internally rotating, I feel that they got to tighten their core a little bit more and keep the elbow in. And usually that put, usually that allows them to get in that position pretty well. I want to say elbow in uh, and not also leaning into it. If you see like a little bit of a forward lean or a side bend or something, you know, that other muscles are taking over. Yeah. So yeah, that's a great like isometric or kind of early level progression. What mm-hmm. will you tend to go to after that? Um, well, if we're really trying to work on getting up overhead, we can work on some external rotation strength, right? So you can use a band, you can use a cable machine. Um, even sometimes you can manipulate a dumbbell to help you work on, okay, I know how to get there, right? I've made the brain connection. My sleeve isn't pulling me down and now I want to get it stronger so it'll maintain that position better. Um, so again, tons of different exercises and ways to work on you know, in this 90 degree position, pulling backwards. You can even pull the cable back and then press up. That'll help you keep that good scapular position while you're pressing. Um, you know, all sorts of things with bands as well. You can go one arm, two arms, anything that really challenges you. Um, and you really don't need a whole lot of weight. Even five pounds is probably plenty to uh, really get a good burn in the shoulder. Yeah, I think I always like progressing to like a landmine press. So. Yeah. Um, you know, once somebody's demonstrated the ability with lower weight to be able to control it, you know, 
getting the landmine that keeps the shoulder blade free to, to you know, upwardly rotate. And it's just a good position. That you, you'll see as someone gets tired, they start you know, doing what they do at the bottom of the carry in the beginning. And so you can really kind of help them to feel that little maintaining that extra yeah. rotation as they you know, upwardly rotate. I like to stand right by someone and have them not hit me in the face with their elbow. Yeah, that usually is a good motivator. <laughs> Careful who you ask to do that with. <laughs> so now, all right, I got to ask. I got to bring it up. Everybody watching is like, well, what about bench press? You guys say that bench press is good to build strength because it helps your chest pass, which helps my club has speed, but doesn't that screw my shoulders up? <laughs> I don't want to start this, but we are huge proponents of the bench press, and I am, um, for building upper body strength and shoulder stability. Now, there are a lot of things we need to build up to. You know, you need to coach properly how, what position your shoulders should be in. Um, you know, you should be retracting your shoulders and not letting them internally rotate here. Um, probably most of the population doesn't need to come all the way down so that, again, you're internally rotating. Yeah, those things are going to help your shoulder, and that's probably why a lot of people think it's not going to help. But if you're in that right position, you're staying tight, shoulders are retracted, you're getting good push, more chest activation, that's going to build amazing shoulder stability and upper body strength and power. I would say, too, for a lot of people that can't necessarily get into that overhead position, a great way to train your upper body is the bench press. Um, honestly, it's a little bit more shoulder friendly than an overhead press is. So um, we see a lot in our data a big correlation between an athlete's ability to bench press and how fast they can swing a golf club. So, um, yeah, but I think the key is kind of like what Alex said is you know, when you're coming down, we always coach people like a floor press. If you have the barbell, you would stop when your elbows would hit the ground. That helps to avoid the front of the shoulders kind of anteriorly basically popping forward. Yeah. Um, so I think that's a big one that we see. And then, you know, bending the bar backwards to kind of, again, that yeah. same kind of bottom up position with the external rotation. Um, and all that increases your ability to produce power too, which is mm -hmm. helpful. <laughs> but I guess you know, as we wrap up, why don't we uh, give, I just, I just feel like it wouldn't be complete if we don't each give our, our least favorite exercise for shoulders. Yeah. Who wants to go first? I'll go. Um, I think that barbell overhead presses can be great. Uh, for the golf community and for most people that can't get into that overhead position, uh, that upward rotation properly, which is most of the population, um, I'm going to go no go for barbell overhead presses. Yeah, it just causes more. You more see this rather than this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or the back going. Yeah, hyperextending. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's where I'm going to throw in uh, the uh, military press with the dumbbells because everybody thinks that's yeah. safer, or the uh, or the machine. That's, um, that's a good one in the circuit yeah. on the machines. Yeah. Uh, if, if, if the person who can't lift their arm beyond there, but they're doing their overhead presses yeah. in the machine. I've seen uh, more shoulder pain from that <laughs> than almost anything else. Yeah. So, yeah. I just think as a golfer, as, as a human, unless you're competing and doing stuff overhead on a regular basis, mm -hmm. the risk reward just to me isn't there, particularly since most people aren't working on the proper upper rotation of the shoulder. Right. You. Well, I think my favorite, very golf specific movement would be uh, if someone comes in with tighter, painful shoulders, and the first thing they do before I have them hit is grab three or four clubs and just start kind of rotating backwards in a nice, slow fashion. Um, I think, like you alluded to at the very beginning, this is not shoulder turn, right? This is not doing anything for my shoulders. We need to get back into a rotated position um, and just swinging a heavy club. One, it probably is slowing you down. Two, it's not doing anything for your shoulders. What if they hold a weight? Wouldn't that be better? Uh, no. What if they <laughs> stood on a Bosu ball? That might break your shoulder if you fall off of it. <laughs> <laughs> Again, not helpful for Let's your shoulders. Let's not opening up that can of worms <laughs> on this episode. <laughs> uh, cool. Yeah, so I guess hopefully that helps, you know, for, you know, if you're concerned about your shoulders or wondering about what the type of stuff you should be doing. Um, and that kind of gives you kind of a start to finish, just general overview, hopefully. Right. Um, but, you know, if, if you found this content helpful, um, definitely please subscribe, share it with your friends. Uh, and then, as always, we're here to answer any questions that you do have. Um, Make sure you like the video. Oh, yeah, and like the video. Yeah, that'd be great, too. Appreciate it. Uh, any other final words of wisdom? Take care of your shoulders. Help your shoulders.